Consider the scatter plots you see on the screen right now. When you look at these different data sets, what type of shape does the, does the data seem to form? Um, if we were trying to connect the dots, like in this first example, A, and we try to do it in some continuous manner, what we see here is a graph that kind of looks like it's some type of exponential function of some kind, right? It does have that same kind of basic shape. And when you look at these other pictures, you kind of see the same idea as well, that they appear to be these exponential graphs, right? So this is something like that. And maybe you get something like this. These have these various different exponential growth and decay type graphs right here. And so I want to kind of mention, how could you come up with a function to model these type of data sets if you believed your data looked like an exponential function? Well, when it comes to exponential functions, one of the most distinguishing characteristics is going to be its horizontal asymptote. So if this is truly, if this truly is an exponential function, that is the data models something exponential, there has to be some limiting value. So like either a maximum or a minimum value on the graph that the function doesn't seem to uh, surpass. Now, if it's a growth model, right? I mean, we actually see two different types of growth models here. There's this one where basically emerges from nothing, or in this case around two, and then it increases without bound really rapidly. That'd be exponential growth there. Um, it could also be that you have this growth that's exponential, but even still there's this limiting value. It doesn't get past something like this. So this one right here would be a good example of like population growth, that there's some some baseline population, which in this case, you know, it probably would be zero, but uh, even still, there's some like baseline that it grows off of going up and up and up and up without bound. Uh, but like this one right here, this might be something like if you take a very cold object and insert it into a hot environment, like Newton's law of cooling, it would, it would, you know, start getting hotter, hotter, hotter. At first, when it's really cold, it would, it would change its temperature rapidly, but then it would slow down as you get closest, getting closer towards the reservoir's temperature right there. And then for the last one right here, again, this would be some type of decay model as you're going off towards some limiting value, again, like Newton's law of cooling or radioactive decay or something like that. So you have to look for these horizontal asymptotes. If there's no horizontal asymptote, then it really isn't an exponential graph. Uh, so what, what you want to know about an exponential function is the most general form of an exponential function is going to look like y equals what we'll call c times a to the x plus k where you have some type of vertical stretch, some type of base. The only thing we know about the base is the base has to be positive and not equal to one, like so. Um, and then there's gonna be some type of shift uh, that goes on there, shift up and down. Now, what's nice about these exponential functions is if you wanna determine the shift, uh, all you have to do is find the, hor the horizontal asymptote. Where is the horizontal asymptote? So for this one, we put it at uh, y equals two. For this one right here, we got it at y equals 10, and this one looks to be about y equals one. So we can we can see, uh, we can see the horizontal shift very easily just by looking at, of course, the we can look at the uh, where the location of the horizontal asymptote is the going to be the, hor the ver excuse me the, the horizontal asymptote's location. It's y coordinate gives you the vertical shift for there. So the next thing to look for, I would then say, is look at this this number c right here. So like we observed. Um, K equals the location, right? The location of the horizontal asymptote. This number C on the other hand, uh, you can determine C here by taking the difference. This is gonna be the, the X intercepts, excuse me, the Y intercepts location, take away the horizontal asymptotes location, basically to take away the K. So if you take the difference between the horizontal asymptote and the Y intercept, uh, that is, you take the, from the y-intercept the horizontal asymptote that gives you uh, that gives you this value c. So then you'd have to look at your pictures and kind of see what do what do these y-coordinates look like right here. And, you know, so, you know, we'd have to kind of make an estimate of some kind, something like this. So for this picture, it looks like it's going to be like nine point five would be my point right there. And so you take that. Uh, we're going to subtract those. Then we see that. C is going to equal 9.5, take away 1. So we get 8.5 as your coefficient, okay? Um, and then you can do similar things for, like, for these other ones. Like this one right here, you have C. Um, you're looking like, uh, let's say, 0.5, take away 10. So you get negative 9.5. And that's good because the negative sign does indicate, you know, that it's, uh, that it's 
kind of reflected downward. It's concave down compared to concave up like most exponentials are. And like this one right here, uh, what do we want to say it is? It's pretty, it's pretty close, right? So we might say something like 2.1. And so we get 2.1 minus 2, which give us 0.1, like so. Uh, and so then we get these C values. And so the next thing then, then to determine is going to be your base, right? So we have to determine the base. Now, some of you might be inclined to use the natural exponential for which you have to modify your function as y equals C times E to say like the Rx plus K. You can make that adjustment. It's really okay. Uh, you can either do a or e to the r. If you want to do exponential, like natural exponential, you can do that. Uh, that'll involve some logarithms to fall, solve for the k for the r value right there, the rate of growth. Um, I'm just going to stick with just my base is arbitrary right here. In order to do this, then you just have to pick a point, right? Pick a point that is looks like it's on the graph and use that as a baseline to figure things out. So, like if you take this one for example right here, it's like ah, it feels like that's a point on there. And so it looks like three comma, you know, I'm looking at the picture here and guessing, but we probably would have a data set that would tell it to me. This looks like 6.5, something like that. For which then we can now work with our equation. We have y equals 0.1 times a to the x plus two, for which then if we plug in the x and the y, we're gonna get 6.5 is equal to 0.1 times a cubed, right, plus two. Um, and so then you can just solve for a in this equation, right? Uh, you're going to have to subtract 2, divide by 0.1, and take the cube root. You can do all of that. A little bit of a tip, if you can find the point when x equals 1, that is a great point to, to use. So if I come over here, oh, that looks pretty good. That looks like 1, 3. You, I like it when the x coordinate is 1 because then you'll see y equals 0.1 times a to the first plus uh, 2, excuse me. Oh, I need to put in the y coordinate. The y coordinate turned out to be three. Uh, the nice thing about when you take the, the first power is that you just get back an a, right? So you don't have to take any roots or anything like that. So we'll subtract two from both sides. Three minus two is one. We get 0.1 times a. And so you can divide by 0.1. So a equals one over 0.1 like so, which of course that just gives you back a 10. And so our function, our model, our model this first one would appear to look like, from my observations, y equals 0.1 times 10 to the x plus a 3, like so. And so that gives, us an, that gives us an equation for the first one. If we do the second one, right, we want to pick a point. Preferably the x coordinate 1 is really good. Like I said, it just makes the calculation a little bit easier. It's not necessary. Um, if we take x equals 1, that'd be about this point right here. So we'll say 1 comma, you know, it's about 4 and a half again. Again, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. We can use technology to improve this calculation dramatically. Uh, but really in this video, I just want to emphasize, how do you do it if you're just looking at it and you're just using a scientific calculator, right? Could we do this? So our C, val our C value turned out to be negative 9.5. A, we don't know yet. And then our K value turned out to be 10, I believe. That's what we saw, yes. And so then we're going to plug in a value. We have 4.5, negative 9.5, divided by a to the first, plus 10. So we're then going to proceed from there, right? Subtract 10 from both sides. Uh, you're going, this is a, that's a 4.5 right there. So if we take 4.5, take away 10. That gives you negative 5.5 equals negative 9.5a. We're then going to divide both sides by negative 9.5. So we get 5.5 divided by 9.5, uh, for which that would then give us, put in the calculator, you're gonna get basically 0 0.5789, you know, we're gonna round all oh, around to five decimal places, so we get something like that. Uh, again, with a computer estimate, we can do a much better estimate here. And so we then can write this down, y turned out to be negative 9.5 times 0 0.57895 to the x plus 10. That equation would model the data you see right there. And then for the last example, let's finish this one up. Uh, so our equation will look like, oops, y equals our c value on this one turned out to be 8.5. We don't know what a is yet, so that's what we have to solve for. And then our k value is a plus one. So we wanna look, again, if we can find the point when x equals 1. That way we can just kind of simplify things a little bit. So that's about this point right here. Uh, let's say that's 1 and 5 and a half. 
right? Again, I'm just kind of estimating using my eyeballs. For which then we're gonna plug those in there. So uh, y turns out to be 5.5. We get a to the first plus one. So you subtract one from both sides, you're gonna get 4.5 is equal to 8.5a, for which then a, a should then be 4.5 divided by 8.5, for which when you throw that in your calculator, you get 4.5 divided by 8.5. Uh, that, whoops, that then gives us 0 0.52941, and that will then give us the equation we want, y equals 8.5, times 0 0.52941 to the x plus 1. And so we can model exponential functions by using this data here. My first recommendation is look for the horizontal asymptote, then look for the y-intercept, and then look for any other point on the graph, preferably the point when one. And if you do that, we can minimize the calculations, the arithmetic necessary to model this thing. And again, this gives us a good estimate of these exponential functions that'll match the data pretty accurately. Uh, again, we can always improve this by using statistics and computer software, but just so you have an idea of what's going on here, we're looking for parameters to fit the data, and this is how we can do it for exponential functions.